back on to schedule. So we're now to Dan giving us an overview, and then the good senator and the good representative give you a historical pers hysterical perspective. <laughs> Jeez. So we're going to back up a little bit. Um, if you all want to take out your sheet that's titled Legislative Review of Major Substantive Rules, uh, especially for the newer committee members, um, essentially uh, rulemaking by executive branch agencies uh, must be done consistently with what's called the Maine Administrative Procedure Act. And among other things, the Administrative Procedure Act sets procedural rules for uh, the development and adoption of uh, rules, agency rules. Uh, since 1996, uh, there's been a distinction between two different types of rules, uh, those that are considered routine technical rules and those that are considered major substantive rules. Um, really, whether a rule is routine technical or major substantive is based on what the legislature says. Um, rules can be designated in statute as either. Uh, the rulemaking process is fairly similar for each of them, except for uh, major substantive rules have an additional rulemaking step in that they are, uh, just prior to being finally adopted by the agency, going into effect, they are what's called provisionally adopted, and they're sent to the legislature to be reviewed um, by the appropriate committee, and then uh, if it gets to that, voted by the legislature. Um, when <clears throat> the rules are submitted to the legislature, uh, the, they are, the submission is reviewed for completeness. There's a number of uh, items that have to be provided with the rules. There's a certain number of copies that have to be provided. That's what uh, our office, um, along with working with the executive director of the Legislative Council does, our office being OPLA. Um, <clears throat> and Assuming that it passes that review, a resolve is generated um, to allow for the rules to be reviewed by the legislature. Um, then the resolve is referred to the appropriate committee, uh, and then the committee can work those rules. Uh, the committee can approve the rules for final adoption. Uh, the committee can approve the rules or only a part of the rules for final adoption with or without amendments, uh, or the committee could uh, disapprove final adoption and then that would obviously go up to the floor and be voted on uh, and uh, the interesting part I guess about amendments to the rules is that uh, you don't you can't directly amend the rules um, you have to stipulate the rules can be amended uh, to require that XYZ so you couldn't when you have your copy of the rules uh, we wouldn't be going line by line and saying cross this out strike this change this sentence here um, it would be more general to tell the department what to do. Um, the committee's review of major substantive rules can involve um, pretty much anything. The uh, statute, which you have here, um, Section uh, 8072 of Title V. It's actually a couple sheets in. Uh, if you turn to the second page, uh, subsection 4 is committee review. Uh, and there's a number of uh, suggestions uh, for what the committee's review of the rule should include. Um, pretty much, there's a lot of things you can look for, but pretty m you can look for anything. Um, and I, I guess I did forget to state that uh, at any point that I'm going through this, if you have any questions, please interrupt me. Um, I'm going to try to take this as slowly as possible, but also... Cognizant and again, I'm sure we'll go through it yeah. again as we're going through the committee. So smush theory will strike right. us many times. Okay. Uh, yes, Representative Campbell. Uh, I, when you were talking about the major substantive, one point that you didn't quite hit was the fact that the reason they are coming back to the committee is because earlier or prior to this, the rules were exceeding the intent of the law. So the reason major substance was here to make sure they didn't exceed the intent of the law. That's why they were returned back to the committee. Right. And if you look at uh, the subsection 4 that I referred you to, uh, the paragraph B uh, is whether the rule is in conformity with the legislative intent of the statute, the rule is intended to implement, extend, apply, interpret, or make specific. So that's one of the facets of the committee's review of the rule. So that, that was my intent for the law. Right. 
Um, I've also created a brief timeline of events, important events having to do with with mining. Um, I think the good Senator Saviello and, and Representative Martin may provide us with a hor historical perspective horror on star, yeah. horror, 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 go ahead. Is that a Freudian slip? <laughs> At least mine was I'm not funny. even sure what I said. And you said horror. A horrible perspective. A horrible perspective. <laughs> historical perspective. Historical. Um, on the rules. Uh, I think what I will focus on really is what happened last session uh, for those of us that weren't here. Uh, the rules were um, submitted uh, on January 10th, 2014. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about whether the rules were filed on time during the under the Administrative Procedure Act or whether they were filed late. Um, the resolve itself actually referred to them as late filed rules. Uh, we had the representatives from the Attorney General's office down uh, who essentially said it's irrelevant under the Administrative Procedure Act whether they're filed on time or not because the, uh, the law that set this whole thing uh, in motion, which I've given you a copy of, Public Law 2011, Chapter 653. Uh, it's titled An Act to Improve Environmental Oversight and Streamline Permitting for Metallic Mineral Mining in Maine. It's the big one, although not as big as the rules. Uh, if you all flip to the last page of that, um, Section 31, uh, as the Attorney General's office pointed out last time, uh, that subsection 1 in section 31 uh, essentially supersedes the provisions on timing in the Administrative Procedure Act so that uh, until the legislature approves major substantive rules that are submitted under this law, uh, the, for lack of a better term, the old mining rules remain in effect. Uh, and there's a little bit of a wrinkle there because the next section allows for some minor changes to certain sections in the rules that were already implemented, and that was a routine technical rulemaking process, but I won't get into that unless someone wants me to. <laughs> it's, uh, it's safe to say, Dan, on that particular section, that may ultimately be decided in the court, so, but, but uh, you're right. Not it's, something I would say. Not, uh, no, it's safe <laughs> to say, I would say, safe to say that I would say that that may be, if we have to, which I hope we don't, might be decided someplace besides here. Right. So. Uh, in the end, uh, I suppose um, it didn't make a whole lot of a difference because uh, there was, although there were bills passed out of this committee and uh, voted affirmatively by um, both the House and Senate, they were vetoed and the veto was not overridden. Uh, so in effect, nothing was enacted by the legislators. Um, those are the rules that remain in effect. The so there were some procedural concerns about the filing last session that we had to deal with. Um, this session, there may be other procedural concerns, uh, not the same, but different. Uh, so as you all know, the department, for lack of a better term, refiled or resubmitted uh, the rules from last session. Uh, as far as I know, they are 100% identical. Uh, including, uh, we talked about this last session, there's some uh, grammatical formatting errors. Uh, the page numbers don't match up to the table of contents. Uh, and that I think was because they were rushing to get those changes done and get it in by the deadline, January 10th, last year. Um, so the rules are completely identical. Uh, we, uh, at the chair's request, we had a meeting with uh, Jerry Reed and Mary Sauer, who are to assistant attorney generals at the attorney general's office, uh, and they consulted, as I understand it, they consulted with uh, the attorney general before meeting with us. Uh, and the question is uh, whether there's an issue created by the department essentially refiling those rules. And the uh, position that they're taking is that yes, there is a potential procedural issue created by this refiling. Um, and <clears throat> as some of you may know uh, the process that the, the, the role the Attorney General plays in the rules adoption process, the rulemaking process, is that uh, prior to provisional uh, 
adoption of the rules or as an, a component of that, they have to certify that the rules uh, are in compliance with the Administrative Procedure Act. And they did certify that uh, as a component of the provisional adoption last year. Um, but another aspect that they play is they have to also certify just prior to final adoption uh, that the rules are compliant with the Administrative Procedure Act. And they have said to us at least initially that they have concerns about that compliance such that uh, if the committee were to uh, authorize in some form uh, and the legislature as well enact it uh, for final adoption of the rules in some form, uh, they may not be able to sign off on final adoption of the rules. Uh, however, while there is what they consider a potential procedural issue, they believe that there are a number of solutions, many of them that will be relatively simple to implement, that would fix that procedural issue and allow them to sign off on final adoption. Uh, they're willing to work with the committee and with myself if the committee wants to move forward with uh, addressing the rules and making any changes or passing out something that approves final adoption. Um, we would work with them to make sure that whatever is put in it would allow them to certify final adoption should it be enacted. Is, yep. is, is, are, are you suggesting that once the legislature refused to approve the rules last session, that those rules are dead? No, I, I, don't, I don't think anyone uh, has anyone? commented on that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the status of the rules would be considered after last session. They were not they were not at a point where they could be finally adopted by the agency. Did they go back to the Board of Environmental Protection? No, the process ended. Uh, maybe not ended. It, it just it's kind of stood. There's, it's, it's there's stood no, there. I believe, and I think, and let me explain to the committee, and I, perhaps we can get an answer to your question. Um, the committee last week, our chairs, were invited to meet with, as Dan said, with the Attorney General. Joan met with them, and, and in my stead, I sent the uh, good representative, uh, uh, Martin in to have this conversation and you might want to expound on maybe answer partially uh, represent Tucker's question as well as to what was decided in there well the discussion we had was sometime question of where are we in the process and and when you look uh, at the APA uh, uh, in terms of submitting of rules it doesn't say that the department can't submit them five times uh, it, it doesn't it says they shall submit so uh, one of the questions we asked or I dealt with is, is you know what does that mean can you do it again there's nothing that says you can't do it again so what the department did was to submit the the rules and subsequently did it within the time period that should have been done the first time uh, I want to go back just a little bit um, because I think that uh, that it, Professor Campbell raised that issue keeping in mind when I first got here there was no such thing as rules uh, the legislature wrote whatever law they wanted, and that is what became law. Over time, the legislature got a little lazy, and they started having the departments write rules. And and so uh, then, in the in the early 90s, uh, the legislature got frustrated with the departments who were writing rules that were and after we went home and do what they wanted to do when they couldn't do it before. So then, then in 95 and 96, uh, we uh, changed the law uh, and created substantive rulemaking. So now you have routine and you have substantive rulemaking. And so the legislature can decide when it writes the law as to whether or not it's going to be routine or whether or not it's going to require that the department bring the rules back to the legislature for approval. And, and so that's the background to how we get to where we are. Uh, and, and so, you know, actually, in all reality, uh, we could ignore all this and simply write whatever we want to in the law, and that becomes whatever it is. Uh, or we can use this process to amend and suggest what, what rules we want change and send that over to the department, which then has final authority to by the, 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 under that process. So after some discussion, when we had that discussion, it was clear that that we can do what we want what we want to do with the rules and at some point down the road which is true of anything you know for fifty dollars anyone can sue anyone 
So, so they, there's always that opportunity that someone can choose to go to court, but whatever. Uh, and that's something over which we have no control. Uh, but, but that's where we are in, in, in where we are today. Representative Welsh? Yeah, I, I would just add, I think that um, what became clear was the Administrative Procedures Act needs a little work to better define I guess I didn't what? draft it well enough. <laughs> so, good representative, get to work here. But um, I think the 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 key was the words at the time an agency provisionally adopts a rule. So that's what kind of we were discussing. What does that mean at the time? And is a year later okay? I think where we came is that when we, if when whatever we do with these rules, we can add. A clause that said, notwithstanding, we understand that these were appropriately put before us. So um, that's yeah, that's the way that, we left that's it. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I thought that if we changed the law, then that would mean that the rules were out of conformity with the law. Right now. If, if Representative ahead. Martin said that if we change, we could just change the law and not change the rules. Oh, this. No, no, no. no. no, no. no, no. no, no. That if you ignore, if you didn't want to write rules, this is back. Adopt it. rules. You could simply take whatever you wanted and say, make, amend the law, and those would be the law, and you wouldn't have rules. Isn't that how the old mining, the old mining is way, actually mining laws, you know, not so, mining rules? So that's really, you go back here, but I don't want to go back to that period because, again, we spent a lot of time. the legislature would be spending, it would be a full-time legislature. Uh, they'd be drafting everything. Represent Senator Breen. Thank you. Um, just in another question about the APA conformity and the procedures and stuff. Um, I was, I've been getting a lot of information as a new person, so I'm trying to sort it out. And one of the things that I heard was that um, when the department brought back the rules to the legislature, this, this go around, that um, we should have had the board weigh in again and we skipped that step or we um, since they had done it so recently we decided it wasn't a good use of anybody's time um, so uh, I'm trying to figure out if that was part of the discussion with the AG um, not just the time you know at the time phrase but the uh, the stops along the way in the chain of um, rulemaking does it in fact go from the department to the bureau to the committee and so I'm looking for clarity on that in the APA there's nothing in there that says that the department has to take it back to the board silent and and it doesn't say that the department can't resubmit the rules it doesn't say it has to. It, it is vague. It's vague. Okay. So there's nothing there that, that it, and that, that's the thing we talked about as to whether or not we ought not to draft some changes to the APA process as to what it is we want it to mean. Because at this point, either side can take the position that they want to, and it's, there's, you know, basically uh, nothing you can do. Representative Welsh. Yeah, and just to clarify for uh, Representative Harlow, we we didn't talk about changing this in order to deal with our rules now. It was just more something that in the future might need to be said. Um, I, I was more just res uh, responding to what Representative, I must, might have misunderstood what he said, but I thought what he was saying is that we could change the mining law and then we wouldn't have to do anything with the rules, but you were talking about the APA. Right. APA. Okay, that's what, that was the confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to change but the mining law, we could, if I'm couldn't correct about this, we could take the rules and go back into it, but you have a bill that's gonna come at you on the mining laws, that if we have to revise the laws related to what we do to the rules, right. we'll be able to do that. Can I ask another? Yes, please. Um, could I ask Dan what the Attorney General's angst was, just because we haven't heard that? Sure. Yeah, and, and I think the, the, the assistant attorney generals may have taken a different approach on interpreting the statute than Representative Martin has. Um, <laughs> they, they, uh, they agree, I think, that 
it's certainly not explicitly clear. But uh, they do think that there's a concern with the way it was done, uh, and that that concern, I believe, is significant enough for them that if there's not some sort of a workaround implemented, they will not sign off on final adoption of the rules. Oh, okay. So, uh, as Representative uh, Welsh pointed out uh, in Section 8072, subsection 2, uh, which describes submission of materials for legislative review, uh, the language that's used at the beginning is at the time an agency provisionally adopts a rule, which suggests that the provisional adoption and, and then the submission is supposed to be a relatively simultaneous process. Um, the the attorney generals did acknowledge that um, in some cases this could be a month, it could be two months, it could be three months, it could be a couple of weeks. Um, but I think the further you get out from that provisional adoption, um, perhaps the more of an issue there is. Uh, they talked about how you know the, the, the comments that were received are stale, um, how much of the overall Administrative Procedure Act seems to be um, structured with deadlines so that the intention appears to be to have a single uh, rulemaking process that goes step by step without any significant breaks from the beginning all the way up until final adoption. Um, so while I don't think they were saying that they are 100% uh, sure that this is a potential, uh, this is a clear procedural issue. Um, they're saying, I think, that they would err on the side of caution and not allow final adoption unless there was some sort of acknowledgement by the legislature that there is a potential procedural issue and a workaround to that issue. And as I said, there's a number of solutions. And, and keep in mind, the Section 31.1 is really why we're here, because under normal situations, if we hadn't put that paragraph in there, the rules would be in place today. That's really important for you to know. This is probably one of the first times this happened where something's been not approved by the legislature, been vetoed, and has now come back to us. Because to me, it's an open-ended statement in the Administrative Procedures Act. It just says, shall submit. It doesn't say when. It doesn't say how long after. They can argue that it's stale, but it's a pretty, sta pretty plain statement to me. I'm not a I didn't sleep at the Holiday Inn, so I'm not a lawyer. But it basically just says, can submit them. May I? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. I just want to reformulate and try to understand your description of what the Attorney Generals were worried about. I mean, the Administrative Procedures Act says that the department is provisionally adopting rules, correct? So there are rules that have been adopted, but provisionally. Yep. So once they're rejected, that provisional adoption ends. I, I, we didn't, we didn't address that, uh, and I'm not sure that's clear uh, in the statute. Uh, perhaps a better way to look at it would be that they're somewhat in limbo. Uh, I think we did talk about uh, this situation may have happened. No, no one really came up with the specific examples, but I believe uh, we alluded to the situation may have happened in other circumstances where a rule was, for whatever reason, submitted for legislative review. Uh, and the legislature um, did not allow final adoption, and the same rule was taken through another rulemaking process and provisionally adopted again, even if it was the same exact rule, and then submitted for review again. And I don't think the Attorney General's office, although I don't think they addressed this, I don't think they would have had an issue with that. But if you if you go uh, to on the, to the law that's on the books now, until we adopt r rules, there are rules, and it is the old rule. So so the last thing we want are the old rules, and so that's really. Well, the we is now us, uh, because in, in the, the bill that, that I sponsored, uh, which is now law, uh, there's a provision in there that says if the legislature fails to act on adopting new rules, the rules that were adopted pursuant to the old law 
are still adopted rules. So when the department, as they, so when rules are promulgated on the new law, that provision is still part of that law. So, so whatever we do, I don't think there's anyone in the world that wants to operate a, we don't want to let someone operate a mine on the old rules. Am I confusing you enough yet? Okay. No, keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> but let me, let me add to what, what the good representative is saying. It, you basically have no, uh, the law is in place that says she'll do this. You go to the old rules and there's nothing there to tell you how to do it. Right. So the applicant can go make up whatever he wants to do. That's correct. To be compliance with it. Dan, did the um, attorneys general have any uh, concern about the step that I mentioned about going back to the board for their process? Did that come up, and did they register any concern about that? I, I don't recall if that was mentioned as a point of concern. It was mentioned as, I think, an option that they, they could have taken, the process that could have been taken with resubmission of these rules, but it wasn't, so it wasn't something we discussed. Yeah. We were looking more at uh, if the committee does want to move forward with these rules, what needs to be done. Yeah. I think the, the last thing they, the, the commissioner wants to do is, re, is go back and try this all over again. Uh, I've also provided you with your own copy of the mining statutes um, and it may be useful uh, obviously we're going to if we as I imagine are going to have a, a public hearing uh, on the rules I provided you with my bill analysis from last session um, some of this will be irrelevant but uh, just for those of you that weren't here uh, my synopsis of the hearing testimony, what people have already said last time about the exact same rules, uh, might help uh, focus your review of the rules um, prior to the hearing. I guess I have two questions. One is, um, I don't think we've heard what the remedy would be. We've heard that it would be a bill, but, um, and the other question is, is that the, the case is that if we have the law in effect and if the rule and the law are out of conformity, then the applicant could do? Is that your read on that as well? Uh, to the extent that the, there is an actual conflict between the rules and the law, the, the law would win. Um, but it's, it's a very um, difficult situation, I guess. Uh, there, I think there is some concern about the disconnect between the law and the rules that was voiced by the uh, attorneys general, but um, that's a problem for them. And that's been in the case for the past year, right? That's correct. Okay. And what's, what is the remedy for this? We're, we're going to... Yeah, the question was, what's the ultimate remedy at the yeah, end? Thank you. As we work through the, the process and we get to a point where we agree as to what the change is going to be, and we basically remember we're sending that back to the department for final adoption and and so it's possible to do that and we can also say notwithstanding the provision of X Y and Z uh, that becomes the rules so there are all kinds of ways in which we can get to that point and the AG's office said they would help us to do that and that's what your bill proposes to do no no my bill that I have on the table I'm, I'm killing that on Tuesday because we don't need it, because we have the rules. And the only reason I put that in was that in the event, uh, I didn't know what the department was going to do and I wasn't here, so I, I just put in the bill in the event that we needed it. And now we don't need it. So that, that will be killed on Monday, uh, Tuesday, whenever we meet, assuming there's no snowstorm. Okay, could I just ask? So It's table right now in the House. Right, right. I yeah, that. and I'll, I'll move to kill that on Tuesday. Okay, Dan, could I just, is there anything else that we've missed as far as the remedies? Uh, I think what we discussed with the attorneys general was that uh, a simple notwithstanding sentence or two uh, to write around what's creating the issue uh, 
I believe would be sufficient to fix the problem. Um, but there are a number of different ways this could be dealt with. Uh, I think it's kind of, uh, it's up to the committee or the majority or minority of the committee to decide how they want to address it. To, we move forward to the public hearing. I really would, I don't know if it's possible, but I really would like to put the word out to people who are going to testify as to how they would like the rule to be corrected, rather than simply saying, I'm against it, I'm for it. Uh, I know that that's, you know, and, and that, would be, that would be helpful to the committee. That, I that, think if they tell us that. Uh, my intent, and, and uh, good co-chair and I have talked about this, is when we go to the mining rules, it will be about the mining rules. It will not be about Bald Mountain. It will not be about Irving, it will not be about Tom Saviello, it will be about the rules and suggested changes to them, um, and we will be pretty strict about that. Now, we have a mining bill in front of us. If someone wants to come and testify against mining, they're more than welcome well, to do and, it. Well, uh, and Representative Chapman may have, and, may, and, hopefully and, we'll and I that. actually have my bill in, too, that's sitting there just in the event we need to make some changes to it. So if we do have a hearing on that, nice that is, to have them that, all together. that's correct. I'm only asking the question because we've, some of us have heard a, a bunch of different versions, so I figure that hearing yeah. the real version here for all of us is beneficial yeah. rather than hearing from this person and that person what the truth is. What we will do certainly before that is the co-chair and I and the leads will come up with how we want to structure that. The hope is that if we do the rules one day, the next day we're doing the mining bills. That's what we're trying to target, but we are waiting for the one to come up, and I don't know where it stands at this point. Well, I did talk to the representative. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Who was thinking and working on something, and and uh, I'm going to be meeting with him next week. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of a different approach, and, and so it may be a little different than what we're thinking of that it may be at the moment. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. I, I would just like, I would request the varieties of us who are thinking about this and also talking to people who are, are invested in, and have some bills out that we at least are able to hear all the mining bills that are there before we move into work session so yeah, that if we want to take some ideas from one thing and, and bring it to you know another part of it that, that we have the whole picture and not work on the rules and then later on get a something else about mining that could be have been relevant to our rules discussions and I do have one question I forgot, Dan. One of the arguments in the last uh, rule thing was that the Board of Environment Protection, and I was very sensitive to them when I was on the Pesticide Control Board, when you made some significant changes within the rules that were being proposed, whether you had to go back out to hearing again on that. And that was some of the comments that were made last time, and I believe uh, Mary Sauer answered that question. But can you answer that for us? That should they have been in her interpretation? I can't answer for myself, but what, she, what she, she testified to in front of the committee last session was that she discussed the issue with all of them and was comfortable certifying that the rule was compliant with the Administrative Procedure Act. And it didn't um, need to go back out to hearing again. And, and that would include that as well. Okay. Just want to make sure the rest of the committee heard that. Any other questions for Dan? Good to have our own attorney here. <laughs> uh, and I would also note that uh, a lot of information we went through today, if any of you uh, have more additional questions I'm always available to talk to right next door um, I'd be happy to go through with the, with you thank you now now we're to Heather and Jeff and you're gonna go gonna say. be safe I think I know what you guys are gonna say yeah I think so you know what we're gonna say you'll tell me if <laughs>